If you watched today's episode of Jujutsu Kaisen, for clarification, episode 38 of Jujutsu Kaisen, and didn't go to social media, had no idea what was going on behind the scenes, etc., you would think to yourself most likely, like, damn, this was a good episode. That cliffhanger with seeing Toji at the end, which, let's be honest, really freaking hype. Like, this is a legitimately hype moment. And then having the Mei Mei stuff at the beginning to the Nanami fight and all that, the domain expansions, the explanation of the abilities, you would look at this episode and probably think a few things. Like, man, this 20-minute episode felt like five minutes, and you're like, this was just really fun. It may have not have been to the same level as last week's episode with Yuji versus Chozo, but it was a great episode. I think even some of the issues that people complain about when it comes to dimming and ghosting wasn't really a huge issue with this episode as well. So overall, a very solid episode. It's definitely above average, not a low quality episode, but there is currently a meltdown taking place. And when I mean meltdown, I'm talking about the episode director of this episode having a meltdown on social media and even posting something like this. Talking about how they feel absolutely worthless and coming back to work on anime, mainly Jujutsu Kaisen, de delivered the final blow to them and basically they feel like there isn't a place for them and they feel like a scumbag. It's, um... It's disheartening. This is legitimately disheartening, you know, news and something just to read because we got to put in perspective here, okay? This is the staff that worked on the episode and all that. Basically, the individual that, uh, you know, was doing different, uh, like, main segments of the episode. Like, the storyboarder was ho uh, Hokuto and also the episode director, which, aka, is this individual, as you can see. And they had a pretty big job. They were the episode director, like, supervising everything, making sure everything was on track, correcting things if they needed to, and then also storyboarding the entire episode. And taking a look at this entire episode, storyboard-wise, it was storyboarded well. I feel like everything came off very organically. I feel like the explanation to a lot of the abilities, like, for instance, FPS and all that, and the frames and stuff, was done very well, because it could have easily been extremely confusing, if not done right, but the way it was depicted in the anime with the uh, narration and all that... It, it was very easy to follow, and even though I'm a manga reader and I knew all this stuff, I feel like anyone that's anime only could look at this episode and like, yeah, all the information's there, it's easy to follow, the fight was easy to follow, and that's a really big deal. So I feel like storyboarding-wise, the way this episode was, was absolutely fantastic. I don't think that this is the best storyboarded episode, but it is a really above-average storyboarded episode. And so when you see the actual episode director slash storyboarder, literally breaking down and having a meltdown and saying that, you know, they ran away from anime and to a game company and then came back real quickly and they glad they did it because they gave them a death blow because they realized that they're probably not cut out for anime, they feel worthless. It's legit sad because I feel like legit, you know, without knowing this, I would say like, man, there's a lot to be proud of. Like, this is a good episode. But we gotta look at the things going on underneath of what's really going on here. And something that's been coming more and more to the surface, bubbling to the surface for a very long time. And once again, I'm going to get a lot of heat for this. Like, a lot of people are going to get upset for me even mention this. But Studio Mappa is known for just pushing animators to the brink. We know this. I mean, hell, I made a video like three weeks ago talking about it. Talking about how a lot of animators were just discussing that the production is outright awful. And just like, you have people like this, like you have this individual saying they also worked on today's episode. And they said they had to do 20 cuts and they were in a very tight schedule and had little more than just five days to work on it. That's insane. Like, they had five days to get a bunch of different cuts out, make sure everything's good. This is not including communication. Communicating with, like, uh, you know, the people, the staff, the episode director, the storyboarder, etc. It's like, is this okay? Does this look fine? Does this fit in? You know, that, that's not even including language barriers. I mean, just all that different type of thing. So, factoring all this in, you can tell that Jujutsu Kaisen is on a very tight schedule and that only five days for a lot of people were only there for them to finish working on this episode. It really really just shows they're they're at the breaking point to where like an episode all it takes is one breakdown for a few animators not to be able to finish in time and they won't be able to get the episode out like the, the fact that you know they had five days for work for this is insane it is actually insane to think about and i know that sometimes this can be the normal but it's still sad that that is the normal but um getting into the point though this animator or episode director and storyboarder 
I think did a fantastic job. I feel like a lot of people going into this episode might probably say, like, you know, okay, this episode doesn't look as good as Chozo versus Yuji's fight in last episode, but I think anyone that's being real and not trying to be an absolute troll and spoiled will say, you know what, this is a pretty damn good-looking episode. Like, this isn't a bad-looking episode. This isn't ugly. The the line work to the coloring, the lack of dimming and ghosting, it's, it's a good episode. It's easy to follow. It has a lot of fun moments. It isn't the most important episode, but it was a good episode. And so, seeing that and then this, I, I hate seeing this. I really hate that because you got to remember, this is the passion for so many. It's very clear for this individual to come back to animating anime. It was something that they love. They love being an animator. They love working on things. And it's sad to see that uh, they're being driven out of the industry because they just feel absolutely worthless because it's like, you know, they're on such a tight deadline. They're not able to get things up to par like they should. And I'm willing to bet you if this individual was given more time to work on it with all the other animators, this episode would have looked even better than it already did, which is insane to think about because this is above average for an episode for a regular anime. It's absolutely fantastic. So imagine if they were given more time, more weeks, just even three weeks more, how good this episode probably would look. So it's just, it's ridiculous. I am happy to see, though, Twitter is actually being nice here and cheering this animator on, saying, you know, please don't say stuff like that. Don't blame yourself. You're being too hard on yourself. I'm really happy to see, collectively, a lot of people are very sympathetic towards the animators and all that. I don't see a lot of toxicity here, so this is nice. I really appreciate that. I, I love seeing people being supportive and all that and saying, look, you're very talented, and uh, hell, I agree. They're very talented for this episode. Everyone that worked on this episode did a good job and they should not feel discouraged or feel like you know they did you know nothing or they're worthless because they certainly put in good work and these final segments as well the episode is really really well done so honestly I just think it's sad because this is not going to be the first or last time we're going to see something like this. It's just more and more common nowadays where these animators are speaking out, putting their job on the line, so to speak. And it kind of shows their mental space right now. Like, this animator's mental space is that, you know, they're kind of burning bridges. And they're kind of just willing to throw their own career under the bus just to outright say, yeah, I don't like this. I don't like what's going on right now in this industry and how I feel worthless. They're potentially kind of stopping themselves from ever getting work ever again so yeah once again it's just it's, it's so sad man it's so sad especially when this episode was so good i i never would have known honestly like if i didn't know this it wasn't being messaged and added at about that i would have felt like everything was going fine yeah i know there's production issues i think everybody's aware of this but to just see that it's like bro that's it's it's depressing it's really depressing but, um, I wanted to talk about that because, like, I like this episode. I think that this was a, fun, like, not a phenomenal episode, but I think that this was, like I said, above average. And I think that people are so spoiled nowadays, they think everything should be like the last episode, which, that's not good, especially when there's just such a tight production schedule for this show. I mean... Any big fan that really does love Jujutsu Kaisen is willing to admit that. And just imagine if this show was given more time. Just how good and godly it would look. It already looks incredible. But imagine if they were given even more time. But um, I'll leave it at that. I just wanted to talk about this. May all of you have a fantastic day or night wherever you live. Be safe. Stay healthy. And tell me your thoughts in the comments below how you felt about all of this information. Chibi out.